blessed and pleasant good morning my brothers and sisters in Christ and welcome to another edition of morning prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize today is the 30th day of March and just like that March is gone and three of the 12 months with it oh boy I tell you time is flying now we're gonna start things off this beautiful Tuesday morning it's very windy and overcast here in Tangriga we're going to start off this one with Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Let's have a listen. Breathe on me, Breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may Continue with our opening sentence for today, March 30th, 2021. 
Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Words from Isaiah chapter 60 verse 3. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 35 using versicle 1. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer, Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the Canticle de Venite, which is based on Psalm 95, verse 1 through to 8, and can be found on page 37 in our Books of Common Prayer. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in Psalm. For the Lord is a great God, and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness, and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind briefly those things that in thought, word, or deed we would have committed, that would have been displeasing to God, that would have been unjust to our neighbors, or that might have been unfair to even our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have a mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms number 6 and Psalm number 12, and they can be found on page 475 and 481, respectively. Reading the Psalms for us this morning are Miss Aria Sylvester and Mr. Fenton Ross, Jr. Let's have a listen. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me in your wrath. Have pity on me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are wrapped. My spirit shakes with terror. How long, O oh Lord, how long? Turn, O oh Lord, and deliver me. Save me for your mercy's sake. For in debt, no one remembers you. And who will give you thanks in the grave? I grow weary because of my groaning. Every night I drench my bed and flood my couch with tears. My eyes are wasted with grief and worn away because of all my enemies. Depart from me, all evildoers, for the Lord has heard the song of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord accepts my prayer. 
All my enemies shall be confounded and quake with fear. They shall turn back and suddenly be put to shame. Help me, Lord, for there is no godly one left. The faithful have vanished from among us. Everyone speaks falsely with his neighbor. With a small tongue, they speak from a double heart. Oh, that the Lord will cut off all small tongues and close the lips that utter proud boast. Those who say with our tongues, will we prevail? Our, our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Because the needy are oppressed, and the poor cry out in misery. I will rise up, says the Lord, and give them the help they long for. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined from ore and purified seven times in the fire. O oh Lord, watch over us and save us from this generation forever, the wicked prowl on every side, and that which is worthless is highly prized by everyone. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We want to thank Miss Aria and young Mr. Fenton for leading us in the Psalms for this morning. They are reading in honor of the birthday of Mr. Fenton Ross Sr., which was yesterday. Our second canticle for this morning is the canticle Jesus Savior, which can be found on page 52. Jesus Savior of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to help and save us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciple. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in glory, make us to be one with you and to share the light of your kingdom. Our Bible lesson for this morning comes from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verse 10 through to 21. And reading for us in honor of the birthday of Mr. Fenton Ross Sr. is his wife, Miss Chernell Ross. Let's have a listen. Woe is me, my mother, that you ever bore me a man of strife and contention to the whole land. I have not lent, nor have I borrowed. Yet all of them cursed me. The Lord said, Surely I have intervened in your life for good. Surely I have imposed enemies on you in a time of trouble and in a time of distress. Can iron and bronze break iron from the north? Your wealth and your treasures I will give as plunder without price for all your sins throughout all your territory. I will make you serve your enemies in a land that you do not know. For in my anger, a fire is kindled that shall burn forever. Lord, you know. Remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. 
your words were fond, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone. For you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing? My word incurable? Refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back and you shall stand before me if you utter what is precious and not what is worthless. You shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank Mrs. Ross for leading us in the reading in honor of our husband. Give me a few seconds here to get back to the beginning of our reading that we could continue our look at the book of Jeremiah and of course we are today in chapter 15 and this is again because we would have said that Jeremiah was not written in or not set up in chronological order of the events that would have taken place and so here we go. And so because of that, today we are in Jeremiah chapter 15. And the book does not begin at verse 1. Our reflection doesn't begin at verse 1. Now, from verse 1 through to verse 9, and the entire book of chapter 15 of Jeremiah, actually, the, talks about the painful prayer of Jeremiah the prophet. It, he is aware of the inevitable destiny of Judah and the fact that the rebellion that they are causing or the rebellion under which they exist yes um is going to bring them destruction and we're going to hear about four forms of destruction in chapter 15 and it almost seems like useless intercession on behalf of judah because they're not going to change their ways but yet jeremiah is still praying for them and he he's tried he's delivering the messages from God. He is pleading with the people. He has lost favor in their sight. He's being judged by them. He is being assaulted by them. And they cannot see that it is for their own good that he brings the messages from God. And so he begins the chapter, chapter 15, with the description of the four forms of destruction. And they would be death. And they, they would be death by the sword. They would be death by famine and they would be captivity. Yes, so it was overall destruction that was going to befall them, and Jeremiah is interceding on their behalf. And after this judgment, the Lord does explain that there will be mercy on the remnant, but yeah, the judgment has to come. And Jeremiah now, in verse 10 to 21, is talking about his personal woes. Yes, woe is me, my mother, that you have borne me. Because he doesn't want to face these things. He doesn't want to live through these things. He doesn't want to see his people suffer. Yes, in considering the severity of his message, Jeremiah thought of the great distress, the great woe that he himself would have to bear. And like Job, he begins to wonder if it would have been better if he was never born. And of course, that is never an option. You are born because God has a purpose for you. And God had a purpose for Jeremiah. It's just that his purpose would not be one in which he would have favor in the sight of the people around him. Because sometimes in doing what is right in the sight of God, you lose favor in the sight of men who do not want to do what is right. And poor Jeremiah. He says, I'm a man of strife 
and contention to the whole land. And yes, he was continually battled with by the people for the messages that God gave him to proclaim. His work as a prophet had, I mean, was filled with strife and condemnation. And of course, who wants to hear these kinds of negative messages? And the people had already been paying false prophets to bring them message of prosperity, which were not true. And so generally, Jeremiah was opposed and quarreled with because he was being faithful to God and delivering the messages and performing his duty as God commanded him to do. And everyone, he says, curses me. Yeah, I have not lent, nor I have, I, nor have I borrowed. Yet all of them curse me. So he he doesn't owe anybody anything. He and it's interesting that he says he hasn't lent here. Huh? You ever notice that people are your friends when they come to borrow, but when it is time to bring back, they don't seem to be your friend. That's another sermon for another time. Yeah. So Jeremiah says, I have not lent, nor have I borrowed, yet they curse me. And it's one of Jeremiah's most moving confessions. Because really and truly, if you're in a situation where you have lent nothing to anybody in your, in your entire life, or you have never borrowed anything from anybody, it speaks a lot to your personal and social relationship that you have with people. Jeremiah must have led a very lonely life. I mean, nobody ever came to borrow anything from him, ever. And he never went to, not even one of his relatives to borrow anything. That is, it says a lot about Jeremiah's social interactions. But you know what? The Lord hears Jeremiah. He hears his woe. And the Lord says, Surely I have intervened in your life for good. Surely I have imposed enemies on you in a time of trouble and in a time of distress. Now, God does not deny that Jeremiah's life is difficult. But God promises Jeremiah a little bit later on in this same portion of reading, both personal, personally as a representative of his people and then socially that he would be okay. Yeah, that his people would not be utterly forsaken in their exile. He would not be forsaken in the heart of the difficulties. God would give him favor among the enemies to come. I will cause the enemies to intercede with you, says the Lord. And it's interesting. Yes, and I love how the Lord puts it in verse 12. Can iron and bronze break iron from the north? And that was a reference to the, the, the judgment that was supposed to come. And the Lord tells them, Your wealth and your treasures I will give as plunder without price for all your sins throughout all your territories. And this is now to Judah he is talking. I will make you serve your enemies in the land that you do not know. For my anger um, is a kindled fire that shall burn forever. Yeah, And he makes sure that he promises Jeremiah a good life. But he reveals that he is going to definitely bring judgment upon his people. Yes. And it's, it's he's, God cannot lie. He's telling Jeremiah the truth. I'm going to take care of you in the coming crisis. But it does not mean that I will change the fate that Judah has brought upon themselves. The weapons of Babylon, which were made of strong iron and bronze, would surely come against them. Yes? And Jeremiah again continues in his painful prayer between verse 15 and 18. Yeah? Oh Lord, you know. Remember and visit me. Bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. And now that is interesting because Jeremiah is now telling or asking God, those who were harsh to me, let them pay for what they did. And Jeremiah was really doing what other godly men in the Bible had also done. He was looking for to God for protection and for justice because he was persecuted for righteousness sake. He was treated wrongly for the good that he was doing for God. And so Jeremiah was just saying, you know what? While you protect me, also give me justice. Those who would have badmouthed me, those who would have treated me negatively, let give them the just rewards. Yeah? And he didn't say, empower me that I could take vengeance upon them myself. No. He acknowledged and rightly entrusted whatever vengeance was appropriate for their actions 
into God's hands. Yes, and it's interesting because sometimes we want to exact our own judgment and punishment on people for when they do us wrong. But what does the Bible tell us? The Bible tells us, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. It's not my responsibility to exact punishment upon individuals when they assault me for doing what is right. Because by exacting vengeance upon them when they assault me for doing what is right, I am putting myself in the wrong. My job, my responsibility is to do what is right. If I am treated negatively by John Q. Public because I am doing what is right, then John Q. Public will have to answer to a force that is bigger than me. I should not try to then use whatever authority I have to victimize John Q. Public or try to take out or exact vengeance upon John Q. Public because they have wronged me. No, I am supposed to stay in the right. I should not go on to the side of wrong and to exact vengeance upon people for the actions that they have brought against you moves you from a position of right into a position of wrong. Know that if you are doing what is right in the sight of God and you are guided by God's grace, God will exact for those who have wronged you the things that they deserve. And what they deserve is not even your concern. So you are not even to say, I wish that you would or that this would befall or, or happen to you. Mm -mm. No, just leave it to God. What happens to you based on what you have done is God's business and responsibility. I have nothing to do with it. I forgive you. I will move on. God, it is in your hands. And it's not always as easy to do as it is to say. Yes, and I'm fully aware of that and I know that because it's not always easy for me you might think that because I'm a priest everybody loves me it's not true people don't always want to hear the truth and sometimes when you tell people the truth you lose favor yes and people sometimes want you to bend the truth twist the truth ignore the truth in order to do what they feel is best and what will benefit them and to tell the truth is not to twist it to benefit anybody other than to glorify God. Only God. Truth glorifies God and truth brings justice. And when you stick to the side of truth, you're not always going to be popular. But as I remind people around me all the time, I do not believe God sent me for popularity contest. God sent me to do a job. And by his grace, I will do what I believe he has sent me to do whether I am popular or not. You see it? And that was the thing that Jeremiah was grappling with because he continued to plead his case before God. He declared to God his great love for God and, and his focus upon God's word. But he didn't want to feel neglected by God or taken for granted because of how the people were treating him. Yes? He regarded God's word with joy and rejoiced in his heart and delighted upon the word of God. But he had a difficult time because of the way the people treated him. And it's interesting. He, Jeremiah says it himself. Yes, I ate your words and found my delight. And he goes on to say, I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice under the weight of your hand, I sat alone. What a lonely life Jeremiah must have had. Hmm? He sat alone and he did what God was supposed to be, what God told him to do. And his cry was still, Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to heal? He had a true trust in God and a true connection to God's word. Yet, that did not remove the crisis that he suffered personally. It did not remove his loneliness. It did not remove the pain he felt knowing the judgment that was coming. And it seems almost as if though Jeremiah was fearful that God was not being faithful to him because of his pain. But it was simply 
a challenge to Jeremiah's faith. That's all it was. And you know what? God again comes through being God. In verse 90 through, 19 through to 21, which is the ending of our meditation, God gives him a promise to protect him. Yes? And he also gives a promise that this crisis that they were facing would not last forever. God promised Jeremiah that despite the coming, the current rejection and the coming crisis, there was always going to be a promise of restoration. And it was almost as if God was saying to Jeremiah, reject the temptation to see me as unfeeling or as unreliable and continue to hold on to my words, continue to be a spokesman for me. I promise you it is worth it in the end. And that's the promise that God is making to us. It's not always going to be an easy journey when you choose to follow behind God. It is not always going to be an easy journey when you choose to follow the way of Christ. But it is always going to be completely worth it. And I will make you to this people, he says to Jeremiah, a fortified wall of bronze. And then he says, they will fight against you. So yes, you're going to pray. You're going to face hardship. But you're going to be a fortified wall of bronze. They're not going to break you. They shall not prevail over you. For why? Because I am with you. I will save you. And I will deliver you, says the Lord. And that's the promise. He never said the hardships wouldn't come. He said he would sustain us to get us through the hardships. The same way he promised it to Jeremiah. Though wicked men may revile and persecute you for my name's sake, yet I will not forsake you, says the Lord. I am no who need to hear it. The challenges don't come to last always. The deception against you will not be there forever. New every morning is his love. And he who has been with you is never going to fail you. Continue to stand on the side of truth. And the God of truth will be your strength. Amen. We continue with the profession of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage B on page 44. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, and your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us 
clean hearts, O oh God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our first collect for this morning is the collect for Tuesday in Holy Week, which can be found on page 165. Let us pray. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful debt to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ, that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We say together a call it for prisons and correctional institutions. Lord Jesus, for our sake you were condemned as a criminal. Visit our jails and prisons with your pity and judgment. Remember all prisoners and bring the guilty to repentance and amendment of life according to your will. And give them hope for their future. When any are held unjustly, bring them release. Forgive us and teach us to improve our justice. Remember those who work in these institutions. Keep them humane and compassionate. And save them from becoming brutal or callous. And since what we do for those in prison, O oh Lord, we do for you, constrain us to improve their lot. All this we ask for your mercy's sake. Amen. At this time, we turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday yesterday was Miss Nora Espinosa, and celebrating a birthday today is Miss Genevieve Campbell and Miss Yasmin Petillo. Ladies, I pray you have a blessed and beautiful birthday, and we pray that God's blessings and mercy will be upon you for all the remaining days of your life. Happy birthday! We continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Ines, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Agnes, and Miss Celine, Miss Agnes V, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Marilyn, and Miss Ruiz. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Eileen, Miss Des, Miss Sonia, Miss Grace, Miss Yolanda, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, and Miss Leticia. We remember and pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janet, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Leslie, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Olga, Miss Nina, and Miss Julie. We pray for Miss Mary, Miss Harris, Miss Marva, Miss Dylan, Miss Felicia, Miss Jessica, Miss Maria E, Miss Althea, Miss Anisetta, and Miss Dominique. We pray as well for the following of our brothers. We pray for Mr. Eugenio, Mr. Larry, Mr. Leon, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. William, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Oscar R., Mr. Hilmar. We pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Glenn Ford, Mr. Anthony, and Mr. Antoine. We pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Eliseo, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Costa, and Mr. Ian, Mr. Michael Soberanis, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Damian, Mr. Normando, Mr. Dion, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Alfred, and Mr. Dudley. We remember and pray for persons who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We pray this morning for the family of Mr. Cecil Bailey, for the family of Mr. James Show Green, and for the family of Miss Nelita Martinez. For all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, we pray for God's comfort and peace to be upon them 
and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. We continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember in our prayers our students, Ashley, Akua, Courtney, Karina, and Anwa. We pray for the enablement and protection of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We pray for Dr. Molina, Dr. Manzanero, Dr. Sho Green, Dr. Arana, Dr. Square, and Dr. Joseph. We pray for Nurse McKean, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Orell, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, and Nurse Alejandra. We continue to pray for healing for persons who are infected with COVID-19. We give God thanks for persons who have recovered. We give God thanks for the vaccine that exists. And we continue to pray for its safe distribution, for it to be readily available to those who are most in need of it. We continue to pray for the containment and elimination of this COVID-19. We continue to pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We pray for those industries most severely hit. We pray for a recovery in our own tourism industry. We pray for our economy. We pray for persons who would have lost employment during this time, persons whose salaries would have been reduced, those who face the threat of salary deduction as well as unemployment. We continue to pray for the most vulnerable in our society, for the poor, the needy, the elderly. We pray for ourselves that God will help us to find ways to be responsive to their needs. We continue to pray for our security forces, for the government, for those who are decision makers on our behalf. We pray for those in positions of public trust and authority. We pray for the churches and the church leadership. We pray for the private sector and for all non-governmental organizations who are involved in the fight against COVID-19. We remember and pray for the members of the international community, for all who presently suffer as a result of COVID-19. We pray as well for protection for ourselves and our region against the ravages of natural disaster. We continue to pray and remember those persons on the island of St. Vincent, who are under the threat of volcano. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together, Almighty and Eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and privilege to be able to wake up and bring ourselves into the presence of God. And of course, it is always a blessing for me to be able to fellowship with you first thing in the morning. I want to thank those of you who joined us for our evening of um, favorite hymns yesterday. I want to thank the Bishop and Mrs. Wright and all those persons who contributed and ensured that that program was as beautiful as it was. I completely enjoyed all the hymns and my neighbors must be complaining because I was singing kind of loud. So yeah, I do hope you have, you had a good time as good a time as I did with it, actually. Today is Wednesday, and I remind you, no, today is Tuesday, and I remind you of our programming for today. At midday, we have noonday devotions, and this will be followed um, at 2.30 entire, for this entire week. We have Children's Bible Minutes at 2.30, where we are looking at the way of the cross in terms of the road that led Jesus to the cross. So yesterday, we looked at him being... Um, angered by the money changes in the temple and i think today he is going to discredit the behavior of the scribes and the pharisees so please if you have children in your household it's the week leading up to the crucifixion and resurrection 
Then in the evening, we have, um, today is Wednesday. I really should have pulled up my stuff. I can't remember if there's something between now and um, 9 p.m., but if there is, I will definitely post a, a message reminding of us, reminding us of it. And then at 9 p.m., of course, we close the day with Compline. So that's our scheduling for today. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. And of course, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning for another morning prayer. We're going to conclude with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace and our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve our persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We conclude this morning with one entitled, Glory be to Jesus, who in bitter pains. And it is being performed by St. Andrew's Episcopal Church Choir. I pray you have a blessed and beautiful day. Do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow, same place, same time. God bless and bye for now.